there, do you think, is there any learnings that you guys, because um, obviously you bring a model to New Zealand, mm. Aussie's a lot more established industry over there. Has there been any things from New Zealand that you've kind of learned and taken back to Australia that have that have worked or been beneficial? Like, I don't know what they might be, but has there been anything you've gone, shit, that's actually pretty good, let's, yeah. we could do that back in Oz. What's been interesting in my role is I've had a few chances now um, to do some advisory work with parliament bodies over there. So mm. what I tend to find and what I tell my team is is you go NZ, yes, whilst it was behind in some aspects of the Australian or the US um, body corporate market and unit titles, etc., that's given the NZ um, market and the legislators a great chance to look at what has worked and what hasn't mm. and then adapt the legislation to suit. Mm-hmm. What I'm finding now is I'm sort of referencing New Zealand legislation mm. going, guys, it works so well over there. You need to bring in the requirement to plan for 30 years or you need to bring in yeah. the requirement to review this stuff every three years because, hello, COVID, yeah. your plan's out of date after a couple of years if you if you haven't got accurate, up-to-date figures, you know. Yeah. so. In that respect, I'm finding that NZ has learnt really well by sort of sitting back and going, okay, that worked well, that was shit else, let's do a blend of these two options mm. um, and set the legislation uh, from that sort of that mm. position. Works really well now to take it back to them. Um, recently in Queensland discussing a similar sort of thing around terminating schemes when they get too old, people can't be bothered to maintain them and, and sort of focusing on at the NZ approach, what New South Wales has done, that sort of thing. Mm. Mm. Yeah, that's interesting that you say that because the we found, we went to a um, like a presentation thing and I was um, in February, a few years back we'd gone to a similar sort of thing over there and found that we felt, shit, we're, we're quite a way behind what's yeah. going on here. Yeah. February, we're like, oh shit, we're actually mm. starting to inch ahead in a few yeah. bits and pieces. Like, I won't go into the detail of them, but... It was surprising to hear our Australian counterparts say, oh, you guys do that so much better in yeah. New Zealand. And, you know, it, yeah. it was quite refreshing for us. Yeah, even to the point, um, a really clear difference I find in the work we do is in New Zealand, they've basically gone, this is from a work health and safety point of view, every single body corporate, doesn't matter what it's used for, if it's just two units side by side, whatever, is a PCBU. They treat it as uh, an, like a corporate entity. Mm. Um, whereas in Australia and some other regions, they've sort of gone, oh, look, you could be, you might not be. Mm. Um, if you're purely residential, we might give you some some sort of uh, benefit of the doubt in that space um, to the effect that they've literally used the words in legislation, a, a residential body corporate may not be taken to be a PCBU. Mm. So it's just absolutely nuts. Whereas mm. NZ just went, guys, you are. Mm. You're responsible for safety of people coming to site. You treat it as a corporate entity. You need insurance. Let's get on with it, you know. Yeah.